a new study just dropped. It looks like having people back in the office doesn't affect their bottom line in the end. The study comes from the University of Pittsburgh, and the TLDR is test report significant decline in employees' job satisfactions, but no significant changes in financial performance or firm values after RTO mandates. We'll look more into this, but I think this just goes to show how desperate these companies are getting with RTO now. We have guides on how to go back to the office for leadership written by employees. We have CEOs flip-flopping on the topic. They love work from home, and then suddenly their shareholders didn't. In 2021, Mark Zuckerberg said, I found that working remotely has given me more space for long-term thinking and help me spend more time with my family, which has made me happier and more productive at work. Under new guidelines, Meta made clear that office attendance is strictly mandatory for everyone that is not approved for fully remote work, and workers need to be in their assigned offices most of the week. Skip to 2023, and they've cut 25% of their staff since November of 2022. And then we have Evan Spiegel, the CEO of Snap, who said, The thing that's been so profound for me is, I'm actually part of our family now. This is going to take time, and we don't want to force it. Cut to 2023, and it looks like he's had enough time with his family. He said, I believe that spending more time Time together in person will help us to achieve our full potential family just f faded out. They've also used return to office as a way to fire people that don't want to comply. You'll see this in the form of a common buzzword now called quiet layoffs. If you go on LinkedIn and look at some of these companies that are posting videos of bringing their employees back to the office, they are so tone deaf. Here's an example of what I mean. Yesterday, Seats and Stations hosted a fun-filled happy hour at HGA Sacramento office. Our employees participated in a thrilling chair race with a chance to win exciting prizes. As we plan to return to the office three days a week, such events are crucial to maintaining a healthy company culture. This is what they had to commute to the office for. Do you think these people would prefer to be playing with coworkers or with their families and children? I'm guessing the latter. Hashtag company culture, hashtag return to office, hashtag downtown business, hashtag team building. This isn't how you do it. This isn't how you return to the office. Just let them work remote, and if people want to collaborate and get together, they will on their own time, on their own initiative. Then we have all these people back here putting them on their own Instagram or TikTok. Look at how fun my company is. What a waste of time and resources. And this is for an architectural and engineering firm, so these people, I'm assuming, went to college, have a bunch of degrees, and they're just being treated like five-year-olds. You pay me for my work, not to be on LinkedIn for company culture. This one, it just blows my mind. You'll have these articles by employees that are working at some company advocating for a return to office. They're not executives. They don't own it. Maybe they're hoping their CEO sees it or something, but if my hair wasn't already falling out, it'd make me want to pull it out. If you've never heard of Keeps before, they're an online subscription service that helps men like myself keep their hair from the comfort of their own home. I've made a few videos in the past about my hair loss before, and the TLDR is, for whatever reason, my genetics decided that right here along the top of my forehead, my hair was going to piece out at the age of like 32. So that's what I've been dealing with. And to be honest, because I'm on camera for a living and I'm not quite ready to let go of all of my hair, it's hard not to see that. And so that's why I've been using Keeps. They deliver clinically proven medication directly to your door in discreet packaging. So you're not going to get this at your doorstep. No one's going to be like, oh, he's getting his hair loss medication delivered today. No, it's discreet. Nothing like that. Go online, sign up for Keeps, and then you'll complete a short consultation and they'll figure out what treatment plan is best for you. And once you're done signing up for that, you can pick your treatment plan schedule. So you can pick three months, six months, or every 12 months for a delivery. And if you decide to change your mind, you can pause or cancel at any time. According to clinical studies, Keeps is 90% effective at treating hair loss and can increase hair growth by up to 35%. I can also say myself, after having done hair loss treatment for a couple years now, that I have managed to regrow this little patch of thinning hair to a point where I'm satisfied and I feel pretty good about it, to be honest. Keeps actually offers both of the FDA treatment options as well as a two-in-one gel that just combines both of these together. They also offer a hair thickening shampoo and a hair thickening conditioner, as well as a pomade if you just want to get your style on. If you're wondering how long it takes before you start to see um, results with the hair loss, it's going to be about six months for most guys. It was about six to eight months for me, right on time, and then I noticed these little baby hairs starting to come back in. As of right now, Keeps has actually helped over one million men like myself keep their luscious locks. And just go to Keeps' website because they have like 4,500 five-star reviews with a whole bunch of before and after photos. Anyways, hair loss stops with Keeps, so for a special offer to get started, use my link down in the description or go to keeps.com slash Joshua Fluke. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Joshua Fluke. How to encourage your team to return to the office, written by this guy. To persuade employees to return to office, business owners and managers must make it worthwhile for the time employees spent in the office. Following are a few strategies. All right, so what are the strategies, Raymond? Establish guidelines for in-office attendance. So what happened to persuading me? 
That doesn't seem like there's any persuasion in just, here's a guideline, you gotta come in. He says, if you're gonna make people come in, you need to fill the office days with meetings that benefit from in-person interactions, such as an architecture design meeting, or a product feature review, or a sprint retrospective. All of those can be done with equal effectiveness over Zoom. Number two, he says, provide accommodations. And they're not the accommodations that you're thinking of. He just says, um, if you're gonna come to work, they should pay for your parking at work, if they have a parking fee. And then number three, he says, address employee concerns. Be flexible with the rules. So he just throws out this entire guide, basically. Number four, he says, maintain consistent communication. Treat the return to office as a new trend, adjusting policies accordingly. Be transparent about the policies and changes, communicating them regularly to set clear expectations. But you're missing the thing, Raymond. They never explain why they're doing it. And then number five, I'm just surprised he wrote at all. He says, incentivize office presence. Instead of punishing non-attendance, reward those who do come in. That's the same thing. This just promotes a sense of bias and favoritism and speaks nothing to the quality or quantity of the work that the employees are doing. He says, what won't work? Making RTO fun. Because for many, work is about enjoyment, a means to an end. You see, I agree with that. I can get on board with that. Office games may not appeal to everyone and can even distract performing individuals. Then this is where it gets messed up. He says, spend that money on entertainment for the sake of RTO incentives and those who are focusing on delivering results, provided that they're in the office. He literally puts that in parentheses at the end. And then we have these articles which are written with like a threatening tone or as if to scare workers. But when when you read it, it mostly just indicates that there's problems with these companies, not the remote workers. Usually that logic is drowned out in a sea of corporate propaganda and a bunch of other unhappy people that usually wish they could work remote but can't and are happy when they see other people get fired. Anyways, the TLDR and the reason I showed you all the desperate things these companies are doing to get you back in the office is because a new study just dropped and wouldn't you know it, it looks like having people back in the office doesn't affect their bottom line in the end. The results are consistent with managers using RTO mandates to reassert control over employees and blame employees as a scapegoat for bad performance. Also, our findings do not support the argument that managers impose mandates because they believe RTO increases firm values. Our study finds a significant decline in employee satisfaction. However, we do not find significant changes in firm performance in terms of profitability and stock market valuation after RTO mandates. This is the math you didn't ask for in the form of this complicated table here. Um, but if you look at all these variables and the controls they have, it's not that big of a difference between these companies before return to office and letting their workers work remotely full time. Anyways, I'm a fan of working remotely. I'm out here in my RV in the middle of the desert, in the middle of nowhere. And when you tell me I'm not as productive in a dimly lit office with a bunch of other people crowded around me taking up my time, I'm just not buying it. Um, RTO will never work the way that they want it to. And the faster they realize that, the faster they could convert these real estate assets into apartments for people to live in instead of just forcing everyone back. I don't know. Maybe that's too complicated. I'm just a YouTuber. What do I know? Anyways, if you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor. Click that thumbs up button. Share it with someone if you think they would enjoy it. If you have anything you'd like me to show on the channel, feel free to reach out. I have links down in the description, Instagram, Gmail, Discord, however you want to do it. Slide in the DMs. But having said all that, I hope everyone's doing well, and I'll see you in the next one.